the no votes in Europe are the big news this week. The new constitution has proved so dull, ill thought out and unpopular, ITD are now turning it into a reality show. <laughs> Brussels bureaucrats claim the only reason people are rejecting the European Constitution is because they can't be bothered to read it. So it's being renamed Harry Potter and the Unification of Europe. <laughs> In spite of the no vote, Jack Chirac is still planning to forge ahead because, as any Frenchman will tell you, when they say no, they really mean yes. <laughs> it's not the first time there's a big cry of no from the Netherlands direction. And in case Michael Jackson's lawyers are watching, I said, Netherlands. <laughs> To discuss this and other stories, six of the finest comedy minds in Britain, John Oliver, Roy Bremner and Jeremy Hardy, Linda Smith, Hugh Dennis and Frankie Boyle, welcome to you all. <laughs> Let's kick off with a round called Inside the Mind Of. With the G8 conference fast approaching, we clamber inside the mind of the American president. Can anyone tell me what the voices inside George W. Bush's head might be saying? Roy? Breathe in. Breathe out. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out. You want a drink. <laughs> if you have a drink, everything will be all right. You can silence me with a drink. <laughs> John, uh, are they saying, George, even we, as an abstract version of your inner soul, would like to completely disown you? <laughs> uh, Kyoto is the dog in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Are they saying, if you step on the cracks in the pavement, George, we have to invade Syria? <laughs> saying, gee, there's a lot of room in here, here, here. <laughs> Are they getting ready for next week? It's Tony's coming to Washington. Look busy. <laughs> okay, guys, okay, enough of those. Let's move on. Let's move on to the next round. Of Give a round of applause to everyone there. Now we play a round called Wheel of News, which involves everybody. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is a stand-up challenge based on this news wheel, dotted the top of the subjects and faces. You spin the wheel, and when it stops, anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh at what the subject it has landed on. If I judge that a person has got a big enough laugh, he or she is safe and gets to sit down again. The first team to have all its players sitting down at the desk wins the round. So here goes. Let's spin the wheel. Well... Michael Howard, the Tory Party leadership. Who wants to get in on that? Ah, like a shot. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's all right. I'm not going to hurt you. <laughs> At the election, I announced my timetable for action. And here it is. I'm going. <laughs> Very good. Well, very much that. You could have sat down after you did the face. Uh, <laughs> so let's spin the wheel again. Okay, education. Who wants to go for that? Frankie's up. The, uh, the government's new education policy, apparently, is to make children stay at school till they're 18. It's just not living in the modern world, is it? 17 year olds having to go to school. Who's going to pick their kids up from primary? <laughs> <laughs> the Catholic Church will get a big thing this week. They say they don't want sex education in schools because that's like giving the kids pornography as opposed to the traditional Catholic method of educating them, of actually shagging them. <laughs> Come on. Sex education at my school was a muttered warning about the janitor. <laughs> that's perfect. Frankie, sit down. Well done, you career. <laughs> Covered yourself in glory there. Let's have another look at the next story. Okay, Asbos. Who wants to go in on Asbos? Linda? Yeah, I get people are a bit uh, down on Asbos, but you've got to remember, this, these are the only qualifications that some kids are going to get. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, sit down, well done. What's our next topic? Okay, ID cards. Who wants to come in on that? Jeremy. Well, these are interesting because the, uh, the defenders of ID cards say, well, we already have to carry lots of ID. You need to uh, establish your identity in order to establish your entitlement to 
uh, enter certain leisure centres or to claim benefit or to establish your entitlement to enter certain buildings. But this new card will establish your entitlement to go outside. And people say, well, they, they were a good idea because we had them in the Second World War. Well, in the Second World War, it was just a piece of cardboard that said, this is Mr. Wilkins, who's not a German spy. <laughs> This will be this digitised, magnetised thing that says, this is Mr Wilkins, he may not be a German spy, but he's got a genetic heart defect, his sister's against GM crops, and he took a video late back to Blockbuster in 1997. <laughs> so, at the tiebreak situation, I'm going to spin the wheel one more time. I want the two remaining players, that's Hugh and John, to give me something on that one topic. You both get a go of it, and the audience essentially decides. So, let's spin the wheel. Okay, the nation's health. Uh, apparently, it's very important to stay healthy to have five portions of fruit a day. I do that, and I have half a packet of Starburst. <laughs> uh, the Tories are very big on MRSA, which I found a bit surprising. I reckon most of them thought it was the way a posh man would pronounce the lead singer of the Smiths. <laughs> Just stand there, Hugh, because John is going to try to top that now. There is absolutely no need to worry about Britain's health because, as we've all learnt, Jamie Oliver is going to save us all. <laughs> and if Jamie Oliver has only taught me one thing, and he has, it's, <laughs> it's this, that an unhealthy lifestyle is like a homing pigeon. Yes, it's a lot of fun at the time, but one day it will track you down and it will kill you. <laughs> there you go. So John, the winner. This round is called Bombshell Phone Calls. Frankie and Rory, you're up next. I believe you've got a phone there, uh, each of you. Very good. Yeah. In this round, two players take on the identity of two famous newsmakers who are on the phone to one another. At some point in the conversation, one of them will drop a bombshell. Rory, you are David Blunkett. <laughs> Frankie, you are Tony Blair. Tony is calling David to welcome back to the cabinet, but Blunkett has a bombshell to drop. Take it away. See, his David Blunkett might be a bit better than my Tony Blair, so <laughs> bear with me on this one. <laughs> Hello, David. <laughs> it, it, is that Ann Summers? <laughs> have, have, have they got one in the large? <laughs> no, David, it's Tony. You try this trick every time. I'm sorry, I'm out at the moment. Please leave a message. <laughs> It, sorry, no, is, is no, that, sorry, is that, that you, Tony, Tony Blair? Yes, sorry, David. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm screening my calls. I've been getting a lot from the Child Support Agency. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to get a hold of you to offer you a job. Now, which departments do you know your way to? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, Home Office, uh, Health Unit, I'd love to do any, any one of those. Anything except work and pensions, because I've got my pride. <laughs> It's work and pensions. <laughs> Fabulous, I'd love to. <laughs> uh, but there's one thing I've got to tell you. What's that? Uh, I've joined Al-Qaeda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, 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 only the territorials. It'll only be every other weekend. <laughs> but, but if I get you, I'll get 20 virgins, and that's got to be worth it. <laughs> But, but that's not the bombshell. Uh, I, I wanted to ask, how, how's Cherie? <laughs> and is she ever sick in the mornings? <laughs> oh, are, you, are you saying you've got her pregnant? <laughs> uh, uh, we've been close. <laughs> She's are lovely. you sure it was her? Uh, <laughs> I, I hope it was, because she charged me 30 grand. <laughs> between Rory's David Blunkett and Benny Hill. <laughs> it's Fred Scuttle, isn't it? Uh, you should see the people I meet on my milk round. <laughs> Thank you very much to both of them, but I think Rory was the winner of that one. <laughs> the next round is called Headliners. I show the teams a photo of someone who's been making the news this week along with the initial letters of a newspaper headline. The teams have to tell me what the letters stand for. Jeremy, Rory and John, here's a picture of Jacques Chirac and Tony Blair. So what does CFE stand for? Uh, 
Uh, Cherie flashes Blair. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Sir Tony Blair going, <laughs> compromise? Frenchman? Bollock? <laughs> Crazy Frog's bitch. <laughs> it could be what's going on in the foreground, so you can't see what's going on below. It could be Chirac fondles Blair. <laughs> or it could be something going off, you know, to that side there. Cab for Blair. <laughs> Collaborating French bastards. <laughs> but there's a big thing, because they're going to meet up at the G8, and Blair's doing a big push, because you know, like, what a populist he is. But he wants to make the G8, he wants to expand it to be the G9, so that Liverpool can take part. <laughs> Do you think it's a boy band? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, G4 was a kind of bit of a shock, realising they had to sort out Africa and... The, and <laughs> yeah, they could probably do it. Yeah, but a million people marching in Edinburgh to protest at G4, that's a bit harsh, surely, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll never give Europe a straight answer anyway. We've spent the last few years constantly sending out mixed messages to Europe. You know, oh, we're an island. Now tunnel into Kent. <laughs> <laughs> The answer, of course, is crisis for Blair, referring to the repercussions of the French and Dutch voting no to the European Constitution. That's right, these two massive no votes delivered a resounding raspberry to the European Constitution. There is photographic evidence, of course, that vote rigging took place in the referendum in France. But with armpits like these, there's no way these two are French. <laughs> is that not? I'll go on a little here. A little bit racist. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's a tiny bit racist, but not as much as the next one is racist. <laughs> The next one I'll is actually that. painfully hideous right. on many, many levels. Right. Like it, hits them, it hits them repeatedly with it a shovel and a pike at the same time. <laughs> the next one. I, love, I yeah. love casual national hate. It's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. And it's not even my national I quite like the French. The Irish get on very well. It's your national hate. Anyway, so. <laughs> I'm here. I'll play your game. All right. Uh, I'm willing to try and mix. Okay. A recent survey revealed that all of Europe sees the French as rude, smelly and obsessed with sex and food. One Frenchman replied, Piss off, I'm busy eating garlic off my girlfriend's nippins. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> the European Constitution sold far more copies in Holland than anywhere else in Europe, but only because it was printed on thin, rollable paper. <laughs> Can I say that I'm very upset the Dutch didn't vote 50-50 because that's what going Dutch means. <laughs> I thought it was ridiculous to go 60-40. I thought going Dutch was a thing with the ping pong balls in a nightclub. Try <laughs> <laughs> playing for your next meal like that. <laughs> <laughs> we're, darling, we're going Dutch. You go first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'll return. How would you return in that situation, anyway? Well, you, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Graham. Uh, let's go to the next one, then. Uh, Frankie, Hugh and Linda, here is a picture of Bob Geldof. What do the letters B-O-F-A stand for? Is it, is it, um, Bob's odour-free armpit? <laughs> is it Bob? Oh, f Africa. <laughs> <laughs> is it Bob? Ouch, fleas again. <laughs> I don't think that's Geldof. I think I think the headline is Britney on fags again. <laughs> is it Bob's owl fight aftermath. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't stand a chance. The owl constantly had the high ground and kept swooping <laughs> and swooping. And he tried to fend him off with like a rolled up leaflet about something good, but he just kept going. <laughs> It attached itself to its head and he can't be seen to hurt a living thing. He's a kind man, but eventually he just had to kill it with a brick. <laughs> His tactics were always bad and that. He actually tried to sneak up on the L, but then the head spun all the way around. <laughs> yeah. And the said, gotcha. Oh, I'm fair. Don't ever try that, because they know exactly what you're doing. Great yeah. fighters, the owls. <laughs> we win in yeah. a fight between an owl and a tiger. An owl. An owl. An owl. An owl, an owl has the high ground. Linda, the, the tiger, it's just going to come down. It's, it will, exactly. The owl would basically, the owl would basically adopt Muhammad Ali's rope dope It would make the tiger just swing itself out and then just go in and peck it. <laughs> I think, hand on heart, we all know this is not making the edit. <laughs> I presume that you probably can get this one. Do you need a clue? Do you need a clue? No. It's in a not a particularly related story. Uh, I'll give you the clue. It's to do with the protest and it's to do with school children. Mm. Bunk off for Africa. Africa. Very good. Uh, Bunk off for Africa. Well done. Yes. Oh, 
This refers to the news that Bob Gelf is urging pupils and teachers to bunk off school for two days to lobby international leaders attending the G8 conference. Children up and down Britain are already following Bob Gelf's example, going up to people on the street and saying, give us your f money. <laughs> Because of a strong anti-racism stance, the winner is clearly going to be John, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this round is called Prime Minister's Questions. For the purpose of this game, I'll be the Speaker of the House of Commons. Rory, you're going to take on the role of Tony Blair. Jeremy and John, you are his Labour colleagues on the front bench. Over here, we have the opposition benches with Linda, Hugh and Frankie. You'll be debating on the heavyweight issue of the week to start. I'd like the Prime Minister to give a statement on the government's reaction to the toads in Hamburg, which have been spontaneously exploding. <laughs> Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm sure by now the House will be aware of the tragic <coughs> incidents in Germany at the weekend in Hamburg, which has seen a number of frogs spontaneously exploding. <laughs> our thoughts are with them uh, <laughs> at, at, at this time. Uh, our condolences go to our German counterparts. I'm, able to say that no British frogs were involved. <laughs> uh, we, would, we would very much like to um, share condolences, but we'd also like a guarantee that the government is taking steps to make sure that none of these frogs make the short hop across the channel. <laughs> and and uh, or toads, uh, which I believe is the, also the subject of the story, and if they do, will he slam the toads in the hole? <laughs> Can I just point out to the honourable gentleman, the cause for these exploding toads is, I'm afraid, inflation. <laughs> um, I'm sorry to say, yeah, oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, inflation, which has been brought under control under this government and was rampaging under your previous administration. Can I, can I just ask, given that what we know of the Germans historically, how long will it be before they start using these toads in their pornography? <laughs> I think that's one for the Minister for Arts and Culture. <laughs> well, this is clearly a complete distraction from the government's main aim of fighting the war on terror. Now, if Al-Qaeda were able to acquire amphibious capability <laughs> here, here. using exploding toads of this kind, then the threat of global terror would be on you our door. Yeah. These pornographic <laughs> videos are going to be made by Al-Qaeda. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but they will be very tasteful because of the burqas. <laughs> Tell me, what steps has the government taken to prevent a suicide toad attack? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, I, I would further add, what measures is the government taking uh, to institute identity cards for toads and frogs who could be getting into this country, soft-touch Britain, as ever, passing themselves off as something harmless such as an owl or a chaffing? <laughs> On that, ladies and gentlemen, I think, mm, I think the opposition take it tonight. <laughs> this round is called Dating Videos. The players take on the identity of a famous newsmaker and record a Lonely Hearts video in the style of that person. Everyone else has to try to guess who they are. Frankie, you're up first. Please can you take a position in the performance area. Let's see your dating video. Would you like to see my puppies? <laughs> I'm looking for someone with the soul of a child <laughs> and the body of a child. <laughs> I live an interesting life, kind of like a Scooby-Doo villain. I hang around an abandoned fun fair wearing a plastic face. <laughs> a unique look, as you can see. The look I've gone for is Liza Minnelli's Halloween costume. <laughs> so hopefully you'll get in touch before my face melts under these studio lights. <laughs> Jeremy, Rory and John, any guesses? Is oh. it Lorraine Kelly? <laughs> was, it, was it eminent historian Eric Hobsbawm? <laughs> uh, it, it must be Michael Jackson. It is, of course, Michael Jackson. <laughs> Here you are going to record a dating video. Let's see your lonely hearts, please. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> right. Let me tell you a little about myself. You can't try and stop me. <laughs> Even now, you're probably wanting to congratulate me on one of the most sensational suntans in modern political history. <laughs> but let me tell you, this has never seen a bottle of oil. <laughs> suntan cooking or the other type which may come in barrels, uh, which I have never seen, and I would like to make that clear. This tan is due to my numerous trips abroad, many of which I have never been on. <laughs> Girls, I want you to light my fire, which will be quite easy thanks to all the oil, which I don't have, I've never had. <laughs> and I will never have. Come on, ladies, I want you all, except Una King, just don't bother. <laughs> Enough of George Galloway. It is about George Galloway. <laughs> Rory, you're next. Grab your envelopes there. Get down there. We want to see your lonely heart, your dating video, your celebrity making a plea for love. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Bonsoir. <laughs> Are you young, sexy, carefree? Neither am I! <laughs> I am the... Uh, I'm 72 years old, I'm very big in Europe. Uh, <laughs> uh, my constitution isn't as strong as it was. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but we could still make a perfect union. People say I'm arrogant. Why do I care? <laughs> I'm just a man who cannot take no for an answer. Unless I have to. But so long as 45% of you says yes, that's good enough for me! <laughs> Any guesses on your side? It's Jacques Chirac. It is, of course, Jacques Chirac. <laughs> Thank you all very, very good. I think Frankie was my personal favourite there. Give him a A little quick fire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone. If you can all make your way over there to the performance area, I call out ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. Okay, here we go. Things a new pope shouldn't say in his first public speech. <laughs> YMCA. Here we go. I've dreamed of this moment ever since I was a little girl. <laughs> What a f***ing view. <laughs> I'd like to thank my wife. <laughs> I only wish that Hitler could have been alive to see this moment. <laughs> I'm a celibate. Get me out of here. <laughs> there you go. Well done. Okay, next couple. Oh, 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 you're more the Pope. Sorry, okay, yeah. Grant, okay. Still on the Pope. <laughs> I can't think of a finer way to spend the last six months of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the tits on that nun. <laughs> okay, next topic. The second topic is books heading straight for the remainder of Ben. Paul Gascoigne's Sudoku. <laughs> <laughs> Beckham's thesaurus. <laughs> the Ron Atkinson diet. <laughs> My Struggle by Paris Hilton. <laughs> John Leslie's Pop Up Autobiography. <laughs> Michael Jackson's Touch and Feel book. <laughs> Iraq's Weapons of Mass Destruction, a dossier. <laughs> Next topic is, slogans the Tory party should have used in the election. <laughs> Vote for us and we'll hand Thatcher over. Are you sinking like we're sinking? <laughs> it's L'Oreal and I'm worth it. <laughs> 
There's a Muslim pedophile living under your child's bed. <laughs> Quite conservative. <laughs> okay, you talk to them If politicians endorsed products, It's L'Oreal, and I'm worth it. <laughs> Kids will just love Kablunkit. <laughs> Hello, I'm Peter Mandelson, and when I needed a mortgage, I phoned Loans Direct. <laughs> <laughs> Were you injured in an accident that wasn't your fault? the end of the show. This week's winner's art was, I, I find it exceptionally difficult to choose, it's a draw on its own. Give it up for both teams tonight. <laughs> Lily Smith Judas and Frankie Boyd, Jeremy Hardy, Rory Bender and John Oliver. Tune in next week. Thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs>
I'm not going to hurt you. <laughs> At the election, I announced my timetable for action, and here it is. I'm going. <laughs> Very good. To be honest, you could have sat down after you did the face. Uh, <laughs> so let's spin the wheel again. Okay, education. Who wants to go for that? Frankie's up. The, uh, the government's new education policy, apparently, is to make children stay at school till they're 18. It's just not living in the modern world, is it? 17 year olds having to go to school. Who's going to pick their kids up from primary? <laughs> The Catholic Church have got a big thing this week. They say they don't want sex education in schools because that's like giving the kids pornography as opposed to the traditional Catholic method of educating them, of actually shagging them. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Sex education at my school was a muttered warning about the janitor. <laughs> that's perfect. Frankie, sit down. Well done, you go. Yeah? Covered yourself in glory there. Let's have another look at the next story. Okay, Asbos. Who wants to go in on Asbos? Linda? Yeah, I get people are a bit uh, down on Asbos, but you've got to remember this, these are the only qualifications that some kids are going to get. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Linda, sit down. Well done. What's our next topic? Okay, ID cards. Who wants to come in on that? Jeremy. Well, these are interesting because the, uh, the defenders of ID cards say, well, we already have to carry lots of ID. You need to uh, establish your identity in order to establish your entitlement to uh, enter certain leisure centres or to claim benefit or to establish your entitlement to enter certain buildings. But this new card will establish your entitlement to go outside. <laughs> and people say, well, they're, they're a good idea because we had them in the Second World War. But in the Second World War, it was just a piece of cardboard. They said, this is Mr. Wilkins, he's not a German spy. <laughs> this, this will be this digitised, magnetised thing that says, this is Mr. Wilkins, he may not be a German spy, but he's got a genetic heart defect, his sister's against GM crops, and he took a video late back to Blockbuster in 1997. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, please, so, it's a tie situation, I'm going to spin the wheel one more time. And I want the two remaining players, that's Hugh and John, to give me something on that one topic. You both get a go of it, and the audience essentially decides. So, let's spin the wheel. <laughs> okay, the nation's health. Uh, apparently, it's very important to stay healthy, to have five portions of fruit a day. I do that, and I have half a packet of Starburst. <laughs> uh, the Tories are very big on MRSA. I found a bit surprising. I reckon most of them thought it was the way a posh man would pronounce the lead singer of the Smiths. <laughs> Just stand there, Hugh, because John is going to try to top that now. There is absolutely no need to worry about Britain's health because, as we've all learnt, Jamie Oliver is going to save us all. <laughs> and if Jamie Oliver has only taught me one thing, and he has, it's, <laughs> it's this, that an unhealthy lifestyle is like a homing pigeon. Yes, it's a lot of fun at the time, but one day it will track you down and it will kill you. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to give you a chance, so John and Richie are the winners. <laughs> this round is called Bombshell Phone Calls. Frankie and Rory, you're up next. I believe you've got a phone there, uh, each of you. Very good. Yeah. In this round, two players take on the identity of two famous newsmakers who are on the phone to one another. At some point in the conversation, one of them will drop a bombshell. Rory, you are David Blunkett. <laughs> Frankie, you are Tony Blair. Tony is calling David to welcome back to the cabinet, but Blunkett has a bombshell to drop. Take it away. See, his David Blunkett might be a bit better than my Tony Blair, so <laughs> bear with me on this one. <laughs> Hello, David. <laughs> I, is that Anne Summers? <laughs> uh, have, have they got one in the large? <laughs> no, David, it's Tony.
the way times are, Breen. The no votes in Europe are the big news this week. The new constitution has proved so dull, ill thought out and unpopular, ITV are now turning it into a reality show. <laughs> Brussels bureaucrats claim the only reason people are rejecting the European Constitution is because they can't be bothered to read it. So it's being renamed Harry Potter and the Unification of Europe. <laughs> In spite of the no vote, Jacques Chirac is still planning to forge ahead because, as any French man will tell you, when they say no, they really mean yes. <laughs> it's not the first time there's a big cry of no from the Netherlands direction. And in case Michael Jackson's lawyers are watching, I said, Netherlands. <laughs> To discuss this and other stories, six of the finest comedy minds in Britain, John Oliver, Roy Bremner and Jeremy Hardy, Linda Smith, Hugh Dennis and Frankie Boyle, welcome to you all. <laughs> Let's kick off with a round called Inside the Mind Of, with the G8 conference fast approaching we clamber inside the mind of the American president. Can anyone tell me what the voices inside George W. Bush's head might be saying? Roy? Breathe in. Breathe out. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out. You want a drink. <laughs> if you have a drink, everything will be all right. You can silence me with a drink. <laughs> John? Uh, are they saying, George, even we, as an abstract version of your inner soul, would like to completely disown you? <laughs> Jamie? Uh, Kyoto is the dog in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Are they saying, if you stamp on the cracks in the pavement, George, we have to invade Syria? They're <laughs> saying, gee, there's a lot of room in here, here, here. <laughs> Are they getting ready for next week? It's Tony's coming to Washington. Look busy. <laughs> okay, guys, so enough of those. Let's move on. Let's move on to the next round. Is give a round of applause to everyone there. Now we play a round called Wheel of News, which involves everybody. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is a stand-up challenge based on this news wheel, dotted with topical subjects and faces. You spin the wheel, and when it stops, anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh at what the subject it has landed on. If I judge that the person has got a big enough laugh, he or she is safe and gets to sit down again. The first team to have all its players sitting down at the desk wins the round. So here goes. Let's spin the wheel. Well... Michael Howard, the Tory Party leadership. Who wants to get in on that? Ah, like a shot. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's all right. I'm not going to hurt you. <laughs> At the election, I announced my timetable for action. And here it is. I'm going. <laughs> Very good. Well, you got me To be honest, you could have sat down after you did the face. Uh, <laughs> so let's spin the wheel again. Okay, education. Who wants to go for that? Frankie's up. The, uh, the government's new education policy, apparently, is to make children stay at school till they're 18. It's just not living in the modern world, is it? 17 year olds having to go to school. They're just going to pick their kids up from primary. <laughs> The Catholic Church have got a big thing this week. They say they don't want sex education in schools because that's like giving the kids pornography as opposed to the traditional Catholic method of educating them, of actually shagging them. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Sex education at my school was a muttered warning about the janitor. <laughs> that's perfect. Frankie, sit down. Well done, you could. Covered yourself in glory there. Let's have another look at the next story. Okay, Asbos. Who wants to go in on Asbos? Linda? Yeah, I get people are a bit uh, down on Asbos, but you've got to remember, this, these are the only qualifications that some kids are going to get. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, sit down, well done. What's our next topic? Okay, ID cards. Who wants to come in on that? Jeremy. Well, these are interesting because the, uh, the defenders of ID cards say, well, we already have to carry lots of ID. You need to uh, establish your identity in order to establish your entitlement to uh, enter certain leisure centres or to claim benefit or to establish your entitlement to enter certain buildings. But this new card 
will establish your entitlement to go outside. <laughs> people say, well, they, they were a good idea because we had them in the Second World War. But in the Second World War, it was just a piece of cardboard. It said, this is Mr. Wilkins, he's not a German spy. <laughs> This will be this digitized, magnetized thing that says, this is Mr. Wilkins, he may not be a German spy, but he's got a genetic heart defect, his sister's against GM crops, and he took a video late back to Blockbuster in 1997. <laughs> German, please sit down. So, it's a tie situation, I'm going to spin the wheel one more time. I want the two remaining players, that's Hugh and John, to give me something on that one topic. You both get a go of it, and the audience essentially decides. So, let's spin the wheel. Okay, the nation's health. Uh, apparently, it's very important to stay healthy to have five portions of fruit a day. I do that. And I have half a packet of Starburst. <laughs> uh, the Tories are very big on MRSA. I found a bit surprising. I reckon most of them thought it was the way a posh man would pronounce the lead singer of the Smiths. <laughs> Just stand there, Hugh, because John is going to try to top that now. There is absolutely no need to worry about Britain's health because, as we've all learnt, Jamie Oliver is going to save us all. <laughs> and if Jamie Oliver has only taught me one thing, and he has, it's, <laughs> it's this, that an unhealthy lifestyle is like a homing pigeon. Yes, it's a lot of fun at the time, but one day it will track you down and it will kill you. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to give you a chance, so John and Richie are the winner. This round is called Bombshell Phone Calls. Frankie and Rory, you're up next. I believe you've got a phone there, uh, each of you. Very good. Oh, yeah. In this round, two players take on the identity of two famous newsmakers who are on the phone to one another. At some point in the conversation, one of them will drop a bombshell. Rory, you are David Blunkett. <laughs> Frankie, you are Tony Blair. Tony is calling David to welcome him back to the cabinet, but Blunkett has a bombshell to drop. Take it away. Say, his David Blunkett might be a bit better than my Tony Blair, so <laughs> bear with me on this one. <laughs> Hello, David. <laughs> it, it, is that Ann Summers? <laughs> have they got one in the large? No, David, it's Tony. You try this so trick every time. I'm sorry, I'm out at the moment. Please leave a message. <laughs> It, sorry, no, is, no, is that, sorry, is that, that you, Tony, Tony Blair? Yes, sorry, David. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm screening my calls. I've been getting a lot from the Child Support Agency. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to get a hold of you to offer you a job. Now, which departments do you know your way to? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, Home Office, uh, Health, you, you know, I'd love to do any, any one of those. Anything except work and pensions, because I've got my pride. <laughs> It's work in pensions. <laughs> Fabulous, I'd love to. <laughs> uh, but there's one thing I've got to tell you. What's that? Uh, I've joined Al-Qaeda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 only the territorials. It'll only be every other weekend. <laughs> but, but if I get you, I'll get 20 virgins, and that's got to be worth it. <laughs> But, but that's not the bombshell. Uh, I, I wanted to ask, how's Cherie? <laughs> and is she ever sick in the mornings? Oh, are, you, are you saying you've got her pregnant? <laughs> uh, I, I, we've been close. <laughs> She's are lovely. you sure it was her? Uh, <laughs> I, I hope it was, because she charged me 30 grand. <laughs> between Rory's David Blunkett and Benny Hill. <laughs> it's Fred Scuttle, isn't he? Uh, you should see the people I meet on my milk round. <laughs> Thank you very much to both of them, but I think Rory was the winner of that one. <laughs> the next round is called Headliners. I show the teams a photo of someone who's been making the news this week along with the initial letters of a newspaper headline. The teams 